As Christians, we are not to love the world. Christ warns us of the evils of this world. Yes, to identify them, but also to help us refrain from loving the things of this world. So our hearts must not be filled with love for the world. And when we say the world, of course, we're talking about the philosophies, the temptations, the evils of this world that separate us from God, not just the trees and the fields and the mountains. The world, the flesh and the devil, they will rob us of our salvation. We have to turn away from these temptations. We do so, of course, by being obedient. We must learn to be obedient in times of peace so that we can be obedient in war. In the 21st chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, Christ is described setting out to us the signs, the signs that we are to look for that will mark the end of this world the coming to an end of this world and already there are things that we're beginning to see already there's great distress on earth and there is something in the air a sense that things are moving quickly we are to be watchful to be careful because Christ says we must not be comfortable in this world this is not our home and if we grow comfortable and have a false security of the things of this world, we will become spiritually lazy. So let us turn away from the false comforts and securities that this world offers. Christ, Christ comes to every man, every one of us, in humility. He will come in power and glory. Right now, we have freedom. He gives us free will to accept or reject him when he offers himself to us in humility. This free will will be taken from us at judgment. The only way we can prepare ourselves to meet Christ when he comes in glory is to receive him now when he comes in humility. To receive him into our hearts. We are to be ready through submission. We must submit. Submit to everything that he instructs us, commands us to do. To be separate to this world. St. James says to us, anyone who would seek to be a friend of this world makes himself an enemy of God. If we seek to be a friend of this world, we make ourselves an enemy of God to the point where we must be prepared to rejoice at the passing of this world. When something is taken from us that we love, we grieve. If our hearts are so filled and so immersed in love for the things of this world, it will be a horror to see this world come to an end. But we are to rejoice we are to let go of the things of this world and to fill our hearts with love for the things of God's kingdom, the things of eternal life, the life to come. This world and this life offer nothing but illusion and vanity. Man, man is strong in his youth and as he grows old there are signs of the coming of his end. And so too with the world. The world was once young, but is growing old. And as it grows old, we recognize signs of its impending end. But the terrors, the terrors that are to come, are a herald of Christ's victory. When we see the things described by Christ happening around us, we are to recognize that our redemption is near. That Christ's victory over death is so close now to us. His resurrection is a reality, not just an historical fact, but a reality in our lives, an ongoing reality. And this redemption, this change in us, is so close when we see these terrible things occurring. As the world ends, our redemption is near, and Christ says to us, 
when we see these things happening, we are to look to heaven for consolation. We are not to be afraid. Do not be afraid, we're told again and again. Look to the heavens. Look, think about, reflect on. Become consumed with the thought and desire for heaven and not for the things of this world. It is there that we will find our comfort and reassurance. But only if we seek to be ready through repentance. If we seek to be ready by turning ourselves away from the temptations of this world. Turn ourselves away from everything that is ungodly. Everything that would strip us of our hope and our salvation. Only when we do this will we truly rejoice when we stand before Christ our judge.